Hi, I'm Mitch, and welcome to the Restoration Road as we begin our series, Love, Learn, Live the Word. And with me to help me teach the Bible are my good friends, Larry Lance, Mr. Youth for Christ. Larry, thank you for being here today. Mitchell Dean, great to be here. <laughs> What'd your uh, wife say you look like this morning? An umpire. <laughs> Can you give us your version of strike? I'm, if David doesn't behave, I'm going, you are out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, Speaking you know that's that, happening. That's right. It's pretty soon, I would think. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, um, from all over the world, touring, one of the funniest men alive, uh, what... Uh, uh, radio station are you on all the time? Sirius Satellite Radio. It's uh, Laugh USA and Blue Collar Comedy. Which is probably more like PG. Raw. <laughs> it's real raw. <laughs> it's and, PG. It's, it's all clean comedy, absolutely. And what's the name of your hilarious CD? Called Indeed. Clap For Me. It is. Whoa, I'm doing shameless plugs right out of the gun here. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> yeah. Can I go again? <laughs> yes, you can. I thought what's, you were going to throw them out now. Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, what's the name of the Bible commentary you co-authored? <laughs> <laughs> Just move on. To <laughs> and your book? <laughs> it's uh, <clears throat> Touchy Subjects, uh, found on Amazon. <laughs> um, touchysubjects.net. I'm not plugging anything else. <laughs> I have an older CD than I did. <laughs> the clean comedian, David. Oh, oh thanks. my. And uh, my good friend, the chief meteorologist of uh, our local ABC affiliate, and uh, you also see him occasionally on NBC and other parts of the world and many churches, which we might get <laughs> Ooh, to today. That's true. The one and only Curtis Smith, who looks so dapper that I'm going to hear from my mom, why don't you wear a suit when you're doing your show? So you look good, Curtis. Thank you, Mitch. I appreciate it. Um, guys, have you ever struggled with how you actually go to somebody uh, with the gospel message, um, or it might be somebody caught in their sin. Maybe they don't really recognize it. And you think, how in the world am I ever going to communicate with that person? Should I just kind of hang back, or do I get involved? And Larry, since you're Mr. Youth for Christ, I feel like you're the first person that needs to address this. Uh, well, with students... Um, it's not that difficult, especially if you've spent time being in their world, um, earning the right to be heard. I mean, that's sort of our philosophy anyway. So if you've built that bridge, it's not too bad. Adults, it's a little bit more of a challenge. <laughs> it is. Uh, but I'm finding myself, as I get older, I'm having more opportunities to do that, especially with men. I'm finding myself in a lot of accountability relationships. And I honestly think some of them, they're so desperate for help, um, they do listen. And as long as you talk about your own issues, you know, it's not, you're a terrible person and I'm really a great person and let me tell you how to get there. You know, it's more of, let me tell you the journey I've been on with my marriage and raising my kids and I deal with my staff. And so you got to find the common ground. Um, yeah. Mo most people want help and want to hear the truth. They really do. I think the two most powerful words in ministry outside of Jesus Christ <laughs> um, are me too. I think that builds a bridge immediately. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think a lot of times as believers, we can miss that. Uh, we think that maybe we shouldn't go that route. Um, Curtis, could you read the lo love the word um, section of our worksheet? All right. Do you devise ways for those outside Christ to find life with God or to remain separated from him? We all devise ways to either pull people toward God or to push them away from him. The determining factor is how we respond to the life-giving inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Well, I want to go from one extreme to another. You got vocational ministry over there with Larry and Curtis, you're in the marketplace. Can you tell me how devising ways to either uh, pull people or push them away works with you and your mindset? Well, it's different. And we were just talking about it a few minutes ago. You know, Larry probably has a blessing and a curse knowing, uh, people knowing that he's from Youth for Christ. It opens doors, but there is an expectation there. There is maybe a bit of a burden to always be on, always be sharing. I think for those of us not in a Christian-based uh, setting, it's a little tougher to get going, but 
maybe it's a little easier in a way because there is no expectation. And I, I think for me, years and years went by without really taking advantage of the opportunities that God was giving to me. Um, a lot of times just simply because of fear. Um, but over the last couple of years, things have really changed for me. I've um, started doing mission trips on TV and it's opened the doors in a lot of different ways. One of them is to have conversations with people. And I, uh, just a couple months ago, I had a conversation with someone I work with and uh, who was struggling with a sin issue. And it was it was kind of the first time I had talked about God at the station with people before, and people know what I'm about now, but it was the first time someone had really come to me and said, I've got a problem, here's what I'm doing, here's what's going on in my life. And I was, it, it's kind of daunting. Yeah. Um, and so I, I went cliche on them and just said, look, I love the, the sinner, not the sin. You know, and I am, you mentioned this a couple minutes ago, I think, you kind of own it yourself and just say to them, look, I sin all the time. Uh, I am not even close to perfect. So we all need God to make up the gap between our sin and his perfection. Yeah. Uh, so your sin may feel huge. It may feel different to you, but it's not. It's all the same to him. It's all sin. We all fall short. Well, it's huge that that person came to you and asked. This is another verse we'll look at uh, in the series, but that he or she came to you um, with the question shows that you in your heart had set apart Christ as Lord and people started to ask. And I think that's really, really powerful um, that you inspired, modeled, and then had the opportunity to teach. I think that's the number one thing I've learned just personally in my life. If you do your very best to follow God and follow his word and live your life in a way that pleases him, people will notice. Yeah. You don't always have to be out front being vocal about it. A lot of times it really is enough to just live your life for him because people will notice and that will open opportunities and doors for you to, to then get personal and vocal about it and to really make a difference in someone's life, hopefully. What did St. Francis say? Preach the gospel always and necessary use words. Use words. Necessary. Necessary. Yeah. Does every show include a uh, message to draw people to Christ, or do you do shows where you just make them laugh? There are bookings where they just want clean comedy. Uh -huh. And I may sprinkle in, um, you know, a possible church story, a faith story, but it's always uh, pretty lighthearted. And then there are events where uh, you do comedy and, and they want some sort of a you know, they want some sort of a message or your story. Sometimes, like I think Larry and Curtis have both references that, um, <clears throat> you know, sometimes when you weave in your story or your struggle, the path that you're on and how you came to meet Christ or, or um, you know, pitfalls that Satan puts in your way, it opens up conversation. Afterwards, people want to talk and say, man, that, that was my story. You know, I was afraid of God growing up or we didn't go to church for this reason or that reason. Um, so it, it kind of lends itself to conversation. Beautiful. Curtis, could you read um, the first paragraph and learn the word on the worksheet? Nefesh is the Hebrew word for life, also translated soul or breath. God pulls toward those who are separated from him by breathing life into their souls so that they may turn to him and experience reconciled relationships. Contrastingly, left to our flawed nature, we push people away from God. In fact, the Hebrew word for estranged means literally to push away. Now, here's the question that each of us must ask. If the Spirit of God dwells in me, do I devise ways so that a banished person may not remain estranged from God? In order to do so, we must, one, inhale the breath of life from God, and two, exhale the breath of life to others. So that's what we want to talk about, is inhaling and exhaling that breath of life from God. And we have three tools. They're actually gonna be the same three tools on inhaling and exhaling, but they have a different take. And it's, the wor it's worship, word, workout. So we have to remember that we were once banished. I think a lot of times the longer we're saved, the, the less we remember that, that we were once banished. I think uh, how you uh, approach the coworker who asked you the questions, Curtis, uh, in a way was saying that, you know, look, I, I was once banished and God devised a way for us to, re to not remain estranged from him. 
And Christ is that way. And his spirit devised a unique way for us to find life in him. So we commit to these three, I call them spiritual pursuits, uh, in order to inhale God each morning. Worship, word, and work out. Larry, you do something every morning that I think can fall into this worship category. Um, can you... I just thought you're, you're going to say something like, why did you pick work out? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was coming. <laughs> Save that one for David. He's wearing a, a special. He's got the Fitbit. I get all my steps at the grocery store. He can, he, can, he can talk about that. <laughs> Looking for organic donuts. <laughs> <laughs> so, Larry, how do you start your day? But you're referring to something that you know God uh, gave me many years ago now, but during a study on faith and, and, and teaching on faith, it was just really revealed to me that get out of bed, I take a step, and I stop every morning. That's my first step of faith, and that's my first prayer of the day. And it's, Lord, what would you have for me today? Is there anything I need to do? Is there someone I need to call? It's usually, you know, tell your wife you're sorry before you leave the room. <laughs> no. I did something stupid the day before. But there's... <laughs> God has never failed revealing to me some marching orders. And it just, it's before I look at my phone, before I look at my calendar and we get to our to-do list, it's a very rich time for me and it's seconds. It's just seconds. But God has always been faithful to give me a couple things. And I feel like, wow, I just jump-started my day with my Lord. And uh, that's, it's, it's very, been very powerful for me. Wow. I love that. I like to include somewhere along the line there uh, worship music uh, with the groove that you like, you know. Uh, I think there's something about music that affects your central nervous system anyway, but when it's directed toward the God of the universe, it's connecting uh, with you spiritually, and you can literally inhale that breath of life from God through worship music. Do either of you do anything like that? I feel a little guilty. To be honest with you, I've, you listen to jokes in the morning. I, well, I've just—I'm happy to get out of bed just, <laughs> at the crack of noon. So I mean, <laughs> there's always a first step somewhere. Dave. <laughs> you figure if you get out of bed, you walk down the stairs, you didn't trip, and you're completely dressed, it's going to be a great day. You, just, you have to lower your standards. But I no, I'm I, I'm probably not as quick as you know Larry here, but. Uh, that's that's one of the first thoughts that I that I have is just grateful for another day of life. Um, you know, we serve a God of I, second chances. You know, I always reference uh, you know Jonah. You get the second, third, more chances than what we deserve. But uh, uh, I mean, you you hit it. I, sometimes when you're longer in the faith, it's almost like this uh, this country club mentality. Like I belong here, and I always feel like I'm the guy in the back row of church. I really shouldn't be here, but somebody invited me. That's, that's how I approach my faith. I, I'm lucky to be, you know, in the fold, so to speak. Did you surrender your life to Christ at a Youth for a Christ? Ago. About a week ago. <laughs> at a Youth for Christ event? I spoke uh, not long ago at a Youth for Christ uh, uh, fundraiser in Fargo, North Dakota, and I love sharing the story. I go back and share the story mm -hmm. As, as you're thinking about investing in Youth for Christ, let me just tell you that this, this parachurch organization, it, it changed the trajectory of my life. So I'm here, number one, as a testimony to Jesus, but I'm thankful for this organization because it, you know, it, it blew the doors off of what I thought was Christianity. And so I'm, I'm changed because of this organization. And so I love being able to do that and share the story. And I, I talk about, you know, I dropped Larry's name and all the Campus Life guys that were there. I can remember like it was yesterday. I made the decision, and I will tell you this, and I shared this with the crowd. I walked out the cabin that night, and I thought to myself, what in the heck did you just do? Wow. What, what was that about? And uh, I still sometimes, you know, I still struggle sometimes with that thought. Like, I hope it's the real deal. Mm. Those valleys that you get in. Yeah where you can't see two feet in front of you. Yeah. I lost my mom two months ago, and, um, and you, you hit those valleys where you're like, I hope this is the real thing. I hope I made the right decision. Mm -hmm. you know, I know you're there, God. I don't hear you right now. Mm -hmm. I'm listening, and uh, you know, the radar's up, but 
There's just, you know. Speaking of King David and your David, uh, I think that's a, in those moments, it's a good time to go to the Psalms because that's what he does in the Psalms. Mm -hmm. Just lays it all out there. Sometimes asking really hard questions. God, are you even there? Correct. Yeah, it's it's like you're 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 leaning over David's shoulder as he's writing to his journal. That's how I look at Psalms. Most of Psalms are written by David. It's like the great songwriter. You're you're kind of like you're kind you can almost just see him writing, and and you feel it's so intimate. And um, you know you, you read some of that where he's pouring his heart out to God, and uh, you know you think to yourself that that's those are my words mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. So. Curtis, starting your day with worship, um, music, uh, thanking God for forgiving you, anything like that? Yeah, I'm unfortunately probably a little closer to David's side. I think David might have been joking, but I really, getting yeah, up at boy. noon is kind of my thing. That's my um, boy, right? It is, yeah. You going to start wearing a Fitbit? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That would be depressing. Could um, we hang out more, Chris? And an, um <laughs> and an umpire suit? <laughs> yeah. You want to be like us? I'm more likely to look into those organic donuts. Dave, it did about. sound um, interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not a morning person. Uh, and so I can struggle to just start to feel okay um, when I'm getting up in the morning. Um, but pretty quickly, I kind of use the shower. I don't drink coffee. The shower is kind of my time to wake up. That hot water hitting my face is kind of me waking up, and I make a pretty regular practice of praying. So that's worship. Next is the Word. Larry, you probably start your day with some kind of Bible that you take in. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Always Psalms and Proverbs. You do those every day? Every day, whatever the day is um, for Proverbs, obviously. And then, uh, well... Meaning that you do a chapter? Yes. That corresponds with the day of the month? Yes. Okay. Uh, right off then, the bat, Larry, like every morning, that's part of the morning routine. It's part routine. of the routine. Wow. And sometimes it's by myself, or right now I've got two early 7 a.m. breakfast meetings with two guys that are accountability kinds of things. So we do it together and discuss it. So it's happening somehow. Uh, but then depending on, I mean, I'm in other Bible studies. My wife and I are in a CTO, Call to Obedience. Oh, wow. We're That's being intense. mentored by a pastor and his wife out of Colorado. And it's some of the most intense stuff ever that I've been through. Um, so studying that and have to memorize certain verses. And so there's, there's, it's back to, that's my world, you know? I live in that world. I, I'm preparing all the time for meetings that I'm using scripture. So that's not the hard part for me. It's inhaling, exhaling, applying what God's teaching you. That's, that's the challenge. Yeah, and conflict and relationships. Mm -hmm. Either one of you do anything with the Bible in the morning? I have uh, uh, my phone devotion that comes in so oftentimes even before I get out of bed I'll read it and uh, it usually never stops there you, you want to do a follow-up verse and then you catch yourself and just want to get the whole paragraph yeah, and yeah. Uh, um, and I'll, I'll have books on the side I'll take with me on the plane I could to read as well and so I'm a big I love Philip Yancey Yancey said one time he says when I'm on a plane and he he discovered this years ago that when say what would you where do you stand with, with faith? And, and Yancey would say, well, I'm a Christian. And he wrote 20 years ago that that actually caused more conflict. Just the connotations sometimes that people have yeah. with Christianity, the negative connotations. And he's just said, after a while, I'm just, I tell people I'm a follower of Jesus. It's, it's more cut and dried. It's a little bit more uh, easier to, to wrap your mind around. And so that opens conversation. I'm, as far as exhaling, I'm horrific. I'm terrible at doing that. I, I'd rather just pull the hood up and on a plane and clock out and not engage. Yeah, back before iPads and stuff, I had a big Bible and a big commentary. And I was just studying for myself. I might have been teaching a little bit uh, in my local church and to kids. Um, and I was on a plane, a commercial plane. I can't tell you how many people just that. I, I'll remember that particular trip so well because they were so big and they were easy to see what they were. Right. That I had so many people on that plane at 33,000 feet start asking me questions. It was really interesting. Really interesting. So Father, I, forgive I me, please. <laughs> uh, the word for you, how do you get it in? How do yeah. you inhale it? 
I do a lot through my phone. I follow things on Twitter um, that give me Bible verses and uh, commentary. So that that helps me a lot. I'm actually kind of the opposite of David, I feel like, in this vein. I, I'm worse at inhaling. I'm better at exhaling. Mm. And that has, Well, you're a communicator. Yeah, that's changed for me, it, partly because I have so many people who do come up to me and feel like they know me already that it, it opens these doors. And for years, I kind of shunned that and was scared of that and wanted to pull the hood over and not really do that. But over the last few years, I just have thought, eh, well, what's the worst that's going to happen here, you know? And I've kind of used the fact that people know me and seem to like me and or seem to listen to what I'm going to say, so I'm going to try to say something meaningful to them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's an occupational hazard, though. I mean... It is. If you say you're a comic, okay. <laughs> right. A, a nun and a Jew walk in. Right. <laughs> and so with you, it'd be like, hey, there's a weather system right. coming in <laughs> through here. Right. There's a storm brewing up through here. <laughs> well, I cannot tell you, and this is no joke. I have probably heard this joke <laughs> in some form 10,000 times. Oh, it must be nice to have the only job. You can always be wrong and oh, keep your job. Oh, my word. That joke gets said to me. That's an <laughs> opening of a, a thousand conversations. And then they follow up with, you can use that if you want. Oh, yeah. That's a good one, isn't it? <laughs> you can use it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can use it. Um, but it does open doors. I mean, yeah. so if you can get past the, uh, <laughs> yeah, boy, I've never heard that one. Um, <laughs> you know, you can use that door of being open. <laughs> well, worship, word, work out. Work out, I actually do mean inhale through, whether it's 100 steps walking in God's creation or whether it's on the elliptical or uh, lifting weights, running something. Uh, it releases the norepinephrine and the endorphins that give you that relaxed energy. And I think it just kind of sets the tone for the day. I've noticed that the difference and the way a day goes for me is whether or not I do these three things at the beginning. And sometimes I combine them all. So I might be on the elliptical reading my Bible with worship music in the background. Um, one of you, uh, Larry, could you look up 1 Timothy 4, 8? I hope it says something about working out. We're going to find out, aren't we? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. So it's a combination of the bodily training and the, and the God thing. I think that's really, really cool. Well, we got to inhale through worship, word, workout, and then we got to exhale. And we started jumping forward to that a little bit, but we want to yield to God's devising ways in us to help the banished not remain estranged from Him. Um, we want to worship God by confessing our sin and communicating His identity to those we encounter, just like Curtis did with the person that came to him. I think that's really, really important. In fact, uh, confess means to agree with God that we see it as He sees it. And we humbly and wisely exhale the word that we inhaled that morning. I, do, I bet that happens to you all the time, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. you, you read a Bible verse and then you get this context later where you can apply it? It's... I'm not going to say daily, but it's often where whatever you're studying, whatever you're reading, you're having conversations with people. I'm just amazed. You know, it's just, it's how the Lord works. He gives you opportunities to apply. And I, you know, as we get older. I mean, we keep learning. It's, it's not what Larry thinks. It's, it's not, you know, I used to say, I've got all this experience. I'm a, a youth professional. I'm an expert. You know, I've been doing this forever. And it's meaningless compared to what does God's word say about it? Um, I'm learning a lot about that in the whole marriage thing. You know, the, what I thought how marriage works and now going through this study, I can't believe how many things I had wrong perspectives of. And it's hard to change that, but God weaves it in through conversations, through music on the radio, through a time like this today. God's always speaking. He, he does for me. Mm -hmm. The word get out uh, that you've inhaled that morning, do you find opportunities that, where that can come out later that day? I think you, you talked about sometimes it's, it's not necessarily uh, just out and out preaching and sharing the four spiritual laws, sometimes just the way you conduct yourself. Yes. I had somebody tell me one time, you know, you could get in and out of a store a lot faster if you didn't care. You know, and so I, I feel like when people are talking, I give them great eye contact. Yeah. I listen and I sincerely, I sincerely care, even though that's, 
it doesn't fit my personality. I'm not great one-on-one, -on -one, but I, I, I do listen I, and people hurt. And I, I feel if they pulled me aside and they wanna share something with me, it's just somebody I know, a friend, yeah, I'm gonna listen and I'm gonna pray for them and I'm gonna tell them I'm gonna pray for them and uh, I wanna be available. And uh, it almost like you feel better about your life knowing that, um, what was the, the great line? If you wanna lift yourself up, lift up somebody else. Um, and that, 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 that applies to me. My wife walks away from me in Walmart because of that. Exactly. I'm, I'm talking to people, she's got her list. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> So yeah, you're in yeah. a store and you, you see people and, and then you care. You just you show interest in them and uh, and then uh, th that's that's really what working out uh, to exhale is. It's it's what you just said. It's serving others. It's doing it through our family relationships, doing it through our careers. Uh, Paul said, "Work out your salvation because it's God who works in you." Mm -hmm. So it's in essence, it means to live it out. Uh, live it out everywhere that you go. Curtis, could you close us by reading that last paragraph uh, of the worksheet in your unbelievable television voice <laughs> that God is using to preach? When we inhale the breath of life from God and exhale the breath of life to others through our worship, the word, and our working out, those we serve will begin to inhale and exhale that divine breath as God devises ways for life. We must remember that we were once banished and God devised a just, merciful, and gracious way for us to turn and not remain estranged from him. Then we must yield to God, devising ways in us to draw the disenfranchised to him. People will be pulled toward God rather than pushed away from him when we surrender to God, breathing his spirit through us. Thank you, Curtis. Our prayer for you is that you would memorize 2 Samuel 14, 14. It's funny if you get into the word, the word gets into you. And then you have this ability to exhale it later. God will bring people around you who need this verse. And it's like water spilled on the ground, which cannot be recovered. So we must die, God's justice. But God does not take away life, his mercy, but he gives us grace. Instead, he devises ways so that a banished person may not remain estranged from him. We all know that we deserve justice and God doesn't give us what we deserve through mercy, but he gives us what we do not deserve through grace. Our prayer is that you would experience his grace this week.